Beep, beep. This video is going to be a bit different from what I usually do. You don't have a usual type of video. Exactly. Now, magnetic levitation is not new. I mean, people have been filing patents for things that go floaty float using electromagnets since 1907. And the Japanese have been testing life-size trains with life-size people since the 70s. And I'm pretty sure that everyone has seen a video of superconductors chilled to insane temperatures floating. But I'm gonna show you something new and different that you can try at home cheaply. In October 2023, the paper by these guys was published in the Physics Review Applied Journal. Not even gonna try to read those names. Nope. The paper describes how a rotating magnet can induce a coupling effect on another magnet. Does it mean f Not that kind of coupling. It means they made the second magnet float at a fixed distance from the rotating magnet, regardless of orientation or gravity. So here's how you do it. I use the rotary tool. You mean a Dremel? Um, no. Cheap asshole! Now, I took one of the accessories and glued a strong neodymium magnet as centered as I could to the shaft. I use the cube magnet because it makes it easier to center and you also need to make sure that the north and south poles of the magnet are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. If you're not sure, just stick two magnets together and mark one of the ends. That is going to be one of the poles. I used a one centimeter cube for this, but bigger is better. That's what she said. So here's how it looks like with a small ball magnet. Fuck yeah, that's cool! It's like those magic or something. I also managed to levitate a bigger magnet, but it's much harder than with a small one and much more destructive. This is what happened when I was trying to do it. So if you're going to try to do this at home, be careful when playing around with strong magnets. So here's levitating a bigger magnet. I had to gently come in from above until it started to spin. When it spins fast enough, it will lock in place. You dropped it, dumbass! Well, my rotary tool wasn't keeping a constant speed, and I didn't align the rotating magnet perfectly. Now, what's happening here is that the floaty magnet is trying to align itself with the spinning magnet, as you can see here. But it can never really spin fast enough to do it, so it's coupled to the rotating magnet. Hehe, <laughs> coupled. I understand the coupling part of the floaty magnet trying to keep up, but it doesn't really compute for me how that causes the floaty magnet to, you know, floaty float. The authors compare it to a spinning top that stays upright only as the top spins, but it doesn't really make me understand why the floaty magnet is locked in place. I can understand how it beats gravity, which is the weakest of the fundamental forces, but it still feels like it's breaking the matrix or something. Anyway, the work by these guys builds upon the work of Hamdi Ukar. Hope that's how it's read. He's done a lot more experiments. You can check out the resources in the description. And it seems like not many people are doing research into this. Now, this might not lead to anything useful, but hey, they said the same thing about cars when they first appeared. And there is something so f cool about being able to do this at home. Dork. And if you like this video, just give it a thumbs down. YouTube doesn't give a f but I do, and I'll show it in the title. And if you accidentally click on the subscribe button while you're there, it will magnetically levitate for you. So, cool.